Hello everyone. Hi, welcome to the channel of Wall Street Mojo. Friends, uh, today we are going to learn a tutorial on revolving credit facilities and we'll be taking an example over here of Nestle and Walmart. Okay, so very first note, revolving credit facilities are pretty helpful for companies if they want to pursue and upcoming opportunities and they don't want to have immediate cash handy. So revolving, revolving credit facilities are basically pre-approved corporate loans facility just like you know credit cards wherein the corporates can avail loan without any further documentation and there are no fixed repayment schedules for the same. So in this tutorial we'll look into the details of revolving credit facility and how it is reported in the annual report and what all areas are important for the financial analyst. Now, first and the foremost thing, what do we really mean by revolving credit? I mean, revolving credit facilities I'm talking about. See, before we get into what revolving credit facilities are, as for the 10K, okay, we need to know what exactly what it is at the very first place. See, revolving credit facilities are a great flexible options for the small business owner. So here's why. Small business owners often face difficulties in regards to pursue of the opportunities due to lack of cash okay lack of cash is the first reason second the small business owner often don't have hefty collateral that is the second reason hefty collateral is the second reason uh, why to take a basically huge loan so they often find that they don't need much cash to pursue a new opportunity but lack of cash or the inability to take loan makes it really impossible even if the small business owners take loan they feel really threatened by equal installments that is emi in every certain period so to solve all the above the concept of revolving credit facilities is being introduced now the small business owners will talk to the bank about the credit facilities and the bank will ask for mortgage okay now in this scenario usually for the business owners inventories or account receivables they act as a mortgages second bank hands the business owners a revolving account where there is a pre approved limit pre approved limit in this scenario if the if the business owners wants to use little she can do or they can do so so on the rest of the amount and interest is being charged by the bank for example if let's say if there is a pre-approved loan of 30,000 okay and the small business owners only need 3,000 they don't want 30,000 they need just 3,000 the bank will charge interest on the outstanding amount and if the business owner does not take more credit facility they can pay back the amount in whichever ways they want so there is no fixed monthly payment over here and you know the business owners can pay back the amount in basically six monthly or six installment the principal plus the interest or in basically it's called bullet shot or known as on the one go now you may wonder that what banks does if the small business owner fails to pay off the amount. See, bank values the inventories or the accounts receivable at close enough to 80% and then they sell off the inventories or account receivable if the business owner fails to pay off the loan amount they have taken. Now, let's understand what is the difference between revolving credit facility that is RCF versus CC that is the credit cards. So, let's understand the difference between the two. What are the key differences? I'll write over here RCF, over here CC, and let's begin. The first and the foremost thing, it may seem like the credit card for small business owner, but it's not. There are many differences, and let's have a look at them one by one. See, in the case of credit card, if, if you talk about, uh, I'll just shift over here as this is CC and this is RCF. Now, in case of a credit card, the person needs to carry it, okay? But in case of the revolving uh, credit facility, the person does not need to carry any card. So, uh, carrying card is really important in, in both the scenario. Sorry, in case of uh, RCC and not in case of RC. Now, the next point of difference is that uh, while using the credit card, the individual needs to make a purchase. But in case of the revolving credit facilities, 
the person does not need to make any transaction and they can get the money directly into their business account for whatever reasons they, they, they basically need it. So over here, you need to make a purchase. That is the point of difference. The fees that are char by, charged by the credit card facilities is much more than the fees charged by the revolving credit facility. Fourth, the, the flexibility in case of uh, credit is much more than in revolving credit facilities than a credit card basically. Now, how to interpret the revolving credit facility? See, many companies in the US use flexibility of the revolving credit facilities and usually you will find that they report back on the balance sheet. Let's say a company has taken a revolving credit facility from a bank. And now where the company would report its revolving credit in the financial statement. That makes, that's my question. So they would first set up an balance sheet and then they will go to the section of the debt and then usually they will mention a note below the balance sheet where they will report about what exactly happens in regards to the revolving line of credit. Now what if they don't mention? Okay, what if they don't mention? So then it would be very difficult for an investor to find out where the debt and the, the figure basically has come from. If the company has done the calculation but does not show the calculation and the exact narration of how it has happened under the balance sheet, it wouldn't be possible for the investor to understand it. The filing system basically of SEC filing is done to ensure that the investor interest is secured. Okay and not showing or mentioning a revolving line of credit will be treated as non-disclosure. Now, and will basically is not going to help the investor at all. Now let's see the example and we will show you that you know how you'd be able to do that. Let's make an example and we'll show you that you know how to interpret the revolving credit facility in the SEC filing. Now we can see there is a balance sheet of ABC company. There are current assets, investments, plant and machinery, intangible assets, which gives us our total assets. There are some liabilities like short term liabilities, uh, accounts payable, deferred revenue, accrued expense. And there are some long term liabilities, which includes long term debt and deferred revenue, which gives you your total, gives you a total liability. Then we, if we, if we just go down a little bit, there is detail of stockholders equity which has preferred stock preferred shares common stock and retained earnings which gives you your total stockholders equity stockholders equity and total liabilities and stockholders equity so this is basically the balance sheet we have and now we'll see how to represent the revolving credit facility so you can see an asterisk basically in the long term debt now let's look at that at, at the note basically how things have been worked over there so let's see the asterisk mark now there are some details over here for the same. There is a notes due that is in 2020. There is a revolving credit facility, which is important for us, 25,000 and 20,000. And you deduct the short term debt, including the revolving credit facility, which gives you your long term debt. So in 2015, the ABC company has taken a revolving facility of 50,000. Okay. From let's say uh, it was RVS commercial bank and they wanted to expand upon the operations by buying a new machinery. For the production house. So in 2015, they took a 20,000, which was payable in three months, basically of the borrowing. And that, and that's the reason it was treated under the short term debt. Okay. And, uh, you can say, uh, in 2016 as well, they took a revolving credit of 25,000 from the same bank and the payment was due within 90 days of the borrowing. So in this case as well, the revolving credit was also included in the short term debt. In reality, it is much more complex and by for the same, let's see in the practical example. Now over here, you can see that Nestle's revolving credit facility, the consolidated balance sheet as on the 31st December 2016 and 15. We have the data for the financial debt over here and financial debt in non-current liabilities. So current liabilities means all those liabilities which will get accrued within one year of time span and non-current are the vice versa are the same. So there are two financial debt, one accruing within one year and there another debt which is accruing post factor of one year. So the above balance sheet is the depiction of the long term debt and the short term debt of the Nestle in the year of 2015 and 16. Let's have a look at how things they how they have report how they report the revolving credit facility under the notes in their annual report and they have mentioned in it, it under the liquidity risk management. So they have mentioned that they didn't expect any refinancing issues and they have two revolving credit facilities. So in the year of 2016, they would have extended both of their revolving credit facility by one year. Along with that, the, there were key factors that were noteworthy are, let's see that. 
Firstly, they had mentioned about the two new revolving credit facility that was a 4.1 billion and euro of 2.3 billion with an initial maturity date of October 2017. They had also mentioned that the group had an ability to convert in, in a one year term loan. Secondly, they had also mentioned about the existing revolving credit facility and their extended maturity date. The new maturity date of the revolving credit facility was close enough to 3.3 billion and another was with 1.8 billion. Now, they had also remarked that this revolving credit facility should be treated as a backstop to their short term debt. Let's see some of the details regarding the Walmart's revolving credit facility. Now, as you can see over here, there are details of consolidated balance sheet of Walmart of 2017 and 2016. The short term borrowings are given and long term borrowing is given. So now we will see that you know how they represented the revol revolving credit facility. The above balance sheet basically of Walmart has portrayed the short term borrowing and long term borrowing. So in their in their annual report, they had a note in regards with to the short term borrowing and long term borrowing. Under that note, they have talked about their revolving credit facilities. First of all, they had mentioned about their short term borrowings, which was depicted uh, over here. As you can see over here, there is a maximum amount outstanding at any month. Uh, average daily short term borrowing in 5691 over here, it was been mentioned about the short term borrowing which was depicted and the annual average weighted average interest rate. Okay, it's written in addition to our short term borrowing, we also have various undrawn committed lines of credit that provides $12.5 billion of additional liquidity if needed. So, Walmart had been committed with almost 20, close enough to in the neighborhood 23 institution combining them to the US dollar 15 billion as on 31st January 2017 and 2016. Let's have a glimpse of that in the table. As you can see over here, there are five year credit facility which is given 5,364 revolving credit facility 7,500 and in case of 2016, 6,000 and 9,000. So it's written over here. They had also mentioned in the note that they had extended both the five year credit facility and 364 day revolving credit facility in June 2016. So in the final analysis, we can say that revolving credit facility is basically a boon uh, to for any small business owners, even the giant companies are also taking the advantage of these things. But as an investor, if you would like to know that where the company has reported its revolving credit facility, you can look at their annual report you can look at their annual uh, report basically and uh, and find the notes regarding the risk management and credit agreement or short-term or long-term borrowings thank you everyone